Karl Heinz Brandenburg, the driving force behind some of today's most innovative digital audio technology, notably MP3 and the MPEG audio standards. Let's welcome Karl Heinz Brandenburg. So, thank you very much. Um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing here, but okay, that's a usual speech, but I have to do it. I'm standing here for a number of others. Like it's usual in science, of course, standing on the shoulders of others. There was a lot of other work. But there were a lot of other people involved in that. Uh, MP3 is the nickname today used for MPEG Audio Layer 3 and that's a standard issued by the ISO IEC subgroup called MPEG, Moving Pictures Experts Group. So you know that and you know that there are lots of people who have a say of what the standard will be. But before becoming a standard of course there was technology to be built so I have to thank my former bosses, uh, Professor Seitze, who in the 70s had the idea that it should be possible to send audio over phone lines, over ISDN. And at that time he was um, told by a patent examiner, no, no, according to the state of the arts, this is impossible. <laughs> so he tried and had to find a PhD student who would try, and luckily I was around. And Professor Gerhäuser, who later led the group at Fraunhofer to do all this work, the chairs of the standards group, Leonardo Chiraglione, the convener of MPEG, Professor Musman and Professor Noll later on, who chaired the audio group. But that's just the formal part. There's a lot of people's ideas in there. And yes, there's somebody in the US who had very similar ideas. He did his patent application a little bit too late. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we worked together then, in fact. That's Jim Johnston of AT&T Bell Labs at that time. And he gets to be blamed for some of these ideas as well. And there's a whole group in Erlangen. Bernhard Grill, Jürgen Harre, Ernst Eberlein, Thomas Sporer, Harold Popp. You see, I read, so I don't forget too many of them, but there were more. We had at some point a real team of people working together in all aspects. We had people from other companies helping us a lot, like Bernd Edler from Hanover and so on. But that's only one part to be able to develop such a technology, to do all the politics in the standards group, which wasn't easy. And then, in most people's minds, to be the second ones. Technology which was leading technology-wise, but too complicated to be used right away. Uh, so we had a difficult start time. So the thank goes to everybody who helped to spread the technology. Okay, no, there's one guy I won't thank, and that's the one who used the stolen credit card number to buy our software and then spread it, claiming it's free. <laughs> he did help us, but still, I don't thank him. But I thank everybody who believed in the technology. We had our friends, and in the end, MP3 really helped to change the internet by making music available. Uh, by some means people didn't like, especially the music labels didn't like, and I have to say always, no, I think musicians and labels should be paid for their work. Uh, but there was really a grassroots movement of people who liked the technology and spread it, and I have to thank all these. MP3 is really a sex success of the internet as well, not just that we used uh, the emerging ideas of writing frequently asked questions on net news or uh, spreading shareware software in the early days. All that helped. So thanks to everybody. Thanks to the Internet Society to select this technology. And that's it.